In Hong Kong, we started off as marches against a fugitive bill later morphed into the biggest and most violent movement the city has ever seen in decades. So what do Chinese students who have been studying abroad, thinking about all the latest development, have been managing to sit down with some of them and let's hear what they have to say. Tim, yes. Grace, Truman, welcome to our program. I want you guys to introduce yourself to our audience a little bit. My name is Tim Huang and I'm a third year computer science major student at UCLA. Hi, I'm Grace. I'm in UC Berkeley, um, also majoring in computer science. All right, my name is Truman. Uh, I graduated from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Uh, my major was uh, finance and corporate strategy uh, in Ross School of Business. And currently, I joined a startup, and I'm working in Beijing. You know, a lot of things are going on over the past year. One thing is about Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with what the young people are thinking and how they are interacting with the society. I just want to have generally your take on that, Tim? Oh yeah, because I heard about a story from a, from a friend, he's from mainland Shanghai and he's studying in Hong Kong right now. So he really told me about how he was sort of scared of the what's going on in Hong Kong, the violence, the protest. At first he planned to stay at his dorm in the university because he's because his university is like surrounded by protesters and he just wants to like study in his dorm. And then he realized that all his friends from mainland, they are moving out of the university, they are going back to mainland. And at that time he was really scared and so it was at a night that he decided to get, get back home. And so on his, on, on his way to the airport, he, he tried to pretend to be a Korean so as, so as the protesters won't uh, attack him. That's a little bit sad. Isn't yes, it? it is, absolutely. So what was it like for him? Um, I think he really dislikes the violence in Hong Kong because it's really going to influence his future. He can't take his final and his grades are affected and he doesn't even know if he could uh, graduate successfully in Hong Kong. He really knows, has no idea what's going on in the future because he originally planned to uh, work in Hong Kong in the future but right now he really had no idea. What about for you Grace? Uh, UC Berkeley is the birthplace of the free speech movement in the 1960s, I think. So the idea of free speech has like been in everyone's heart, like every student and teachers. So during like last few months, we have seen like posters uh, about Hong Kong problem and also some lectures hosted by some Hong Kong faculties or Hong Kong students. And um, as I could like sense, there are like few sentim sentiments among all the mainland, mainland Chinese students, because uh, like all the students in my club has been like expressing their feelings and thoughts on social media. But um, however, as a student in UC Berkeley, we know that we have to like protest or like correctly, not just to like tear down all their posters or yelling at each other like in the school. So basically some Chinese students have like organized a like song sing event, sing like mm, me and my country, which is a song that expresses like their feeling to China. I feel like it's a really good activity and it has been like videoed and posted on social media and it was like very popular among all the Chinese students in Berkeley also on Weibo. Mm. Do you think you're worried there will be division even among the students in your university, those are coming from the mainland or those are coming from Hong Kong? Yeah, I think there will be like controversies but not as hard as like a division or something because um, in my friend circle there are a few students who support like the freedom of Hong Kong there are also students who like support like one China so basically um, probably they, they, they won't be able to make good friends with each other <laughs> but they won't like um, involve in any like violent stuff mm, and interesting mm -hmm. to see how it, that is being reflected even in a university yeah. like yours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. far away from where the real things are going uh, what about for you Truman? I think mutual understanding uh, especially knowing each other's bottom line uh, is very important uh, between young people, young generation uh, not only um, 
between mainland and Hong Kong, but also between China and the U.S. on Hong Kong issue specifically. Why would you say so? Uh, yeah, I'm a big sport fan. Uh, I follow uh, American sport. Of course, uh, you're from the University of Michigan. Yeah, I'm from <laughs> Michigan. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, what, what happened in the past month, uh, Houston Rocket uh, manager posted a very controversial Twitter. And uh, as it, a lot of Chinese fans, uh, I'm a, actually a Houston Rocket fan. And I, I was very mad. Uh, and I didn't really understand why he would actually do that. Uh, and uh, the China market really reacts to his act. Uh, I, I think one thing I, I want to bring up is if somebody wants to be a professional club manager, he should be responsible for what he say and do more research, uh, really know what they're talking about, especially uh, bottom lines. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, I think for the younger, ch younger generation in China, they really care about uh, the unity of uh, our nation, uh, the one China uh, policy. But people would ask the question, really, do you really represent you know, what the Chinese young people are thinking? Because after all, you are president of the Chinese uh, Students Association or club. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as a one of the identities, we are the presidents, but uh, we are also young students, young, young guys or girls uh, who studying in the U.S. Uh, I actually uh, went to U.S. for high school. Uh, I spent seven years, uh, eight years uh, in, in the States. Uh, and uh, it, it was a process for me uh, to be patriotic as, as now. So uh, it, it was a process for me. What does patriotism mean? I feel like it's just like being proud of your own country. For what? Just for every single achievement. Uh, for example, you know, like a few months ago, like there's the military review or military parade in Beijing. And um, a lot of the students who are like me, who like went to high school back in mainland and then went to college in the U.S., have watched the, the, the live version stream of it on YouTube and like posting things like, oh, how I love my country. It's like getting stronger and stronger every day on social media. So people voluntarily posted things like that onto yeah. the internet. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And what about for you, Tim? We actually had a very similar event as what happened in UC Berkeley. So there was a gathering uh, to, to sort of like free Hong Kong. So uh, in, a, in a gathering, there are a group of Hong Kong, Hong Kong students and they gathered on the right side of the road and they're like delivering materials to say like uh, what they want, what the Hong Kong demands and how, how the world should support Hong Kong. And on the other side, there are a group of Chinese students from mainland. Uh, so they're like holding, holding posters like I support Hong Kong police and stuff like that. And they're, they're telling about uh, uh, other students what's actually going on in Hong Kong from the uh, perspective of the mainland students. So I think both two groups, they're, they're trying to uh, make their voices. Uh, I just want to add on to him. Uh, I guess patriotism to me is uh, at a crucial moment what kind of choice you make. Uh, I graduated. Uh, I spent, I spent uh, seven, eight years in the States, but now I'm in Beijing. I think patriotism for me is uh, where you want to live your life, where you want to spend your time, where you want to get married, where you want to have babies. <laughs> uh, and I think patriotism is personal uh, for me especially. Uh, I, I, I chose to come back because uh, I, I love this land. Uh, I see opportunities and uh, I think I'm more fit uh, in China. Uh, and those, I think, I think patriotism is not only uh, emotional but also rational. Mm. Uh, let me ask you, since we're talking about Hong Kong a bit, would you be able still to communicate with those people who do not necessarily agree with you on, let's just say, the issue of Hong Kong? Mm. Be able to still talk to them, communicate with them, interact with them, and even cooperate on other fields with them? Tim. So yeah, uh, getting back to my story, I just, I just mentioned about the Hong Kong gathering in UCLA. So there was actually a, a local Californian student who was supporting the Hong Kong students and he was like holding, holding, the, holding the poster saying like uh, uh, free Hong Kong stuff like that. And so uh, one of our students just talked to him and we had a really 
a nicely con conversation about Hong Kong issues. And then we realized that he actually didn't know so much about what's happening in Hong Kong. He didn't ha really have that uh, understanding of the, the reality of Hong Kong. He thought that the Hong Kong people are really uh, under very bad conditions, but it's actually not true. They, they feel like the Hong Kongese are living without any freedom, which is not true. And we just talked to him and we really tell him what's going on in the Hong Kong protests and probably some violence, which he doesn't like as well. So it was a really good conversation. I think one, one really important thing to, to keep in mind when we are talking with students with different minds is that we need to first uh, have a conversation peacefully and try to understand what each other people are thinking and try to tell, try to let them understand what we are thinking. And then I think we're all good students with a good education and we are all rational people and we can understand each other in a very peaceful way. Mm. So violence is not the choice. Yes. Definitely is not the choice. But you know, when I think about this issue, it's not just uh, what's going on in the streets. It's also about why it happened. Now, there are a lot of uh, soul searching in Hong Kong, whether it's about politics or economy or you know, society uh, transformation. But as a, someone who studied in the United States for a long time and, and interact with different cultures, talk to people of different minds, what do you think are the most important things behind all of this? I have a lot of friends in, uh, in Hong Kong. I have a lot of friends in, uh, from Hong Kong in Beijing. Um, they know mainland very well. They know Beijing very well. Um, they joined Beijing and uh, they are in startups. They are in uh, companies. They are in government, in different sectors. Uh, they know mainland very well. And I think they really open up uh, their subs and they see and they seize the opportunities in mainland. Um, I guess what I want to say is um, I encourage not only us but also uh, young, young uh, students uh, in Hong Kong to uh, think more about opportunities, to think more about um, the development of our nation and uh, come to Beijing, come to Shanghai, come to Shenzhen. And so you think their future is here on the mainland or their future is in Hong Kong? I think their futures are tied. Their future is China. Yeah, because China is a is an entity, including mainland Hong Kong and Taiwan, and this is all of our opportunities. Interesting. And Grace, I have like a funny story to tell. There's a Hong Kong student in my group in an entrepreneurship class in Berkeley, and he knows that I'm I'm from mainland, and I, I I've seen him like wearing those black masks. So obviously he has been like involved in the gatherings of the Hong Kong students. However, we treat each other really like politely in class and we kind of like never talk about the sensitive topic. And in class, I even like kind of tutored him about like a data science homework and we actually became like very good friends. For most of the students from mainland China, we all agree that it's all right to express your needs in a peaceful way, but not okay when you do it violently. So I think that's the conflict in Hong Kong right now. Mm -hmm. Some suggest that when they see, you know, young students, even as young as from even primary school mm -hmm. and the middle school, high school, on the streets, people feel, you know, their heart hurts because they're so young and they could have a beautiful future, but by doing things like this, part of their memories will be about violence, and, and that's very sad. Yeah, I think that brings up about like, the education, like the importance of, edu of education and upbringing. Because like, for me, like, what I heard or from what I read, like most of the students on the street, uh, they do this not because of like, it's like something terminal in their mind or something. It's just like they're mimicking what other people mm. in their age or around them are doing. Imitation. Yeah. And also these kind of stereotypes about like men like has embedded in their education systems. Like they've been educated to dislike men like. Have you ever thought about what you have read about Hong Kong? What you have heard? Does that ha also have an impact on you? What I was really thinking about is like why were these students having the protest and so why are they doing or doing them in a very violent way? 
And my sort of answer after talking with some of my Hong Kongese friends, which is probably not very uh, well-rounded, they can't represent the whole, whole picture of the Hong Kong people. But what they really told me was like the, uh, so, uh, actually a very big group of the Hong Kong, Hong Kong teenagers, they are having a, a very big challenge regarding their future. Like, uh, there are probably some structural problems with Hong Kong, and especially to those people from lower or middle or lower class, they can't really, uh, they can't really get a very good life because of the high uh, housing price or uh, other issues. Of course, you are not in the position, mm -hmm. but if people ask you, so what can we do to make things better? For me, uh, I think I should know more about Hong Kong. Um, that, that's what I can do, and that's what I should do. Uh, we do more research about Hong Kong. Uh, we talk with Hong Kong uh, Hong Kongese people, and uh, and then we, we build up the, the the understanding between each other. Mm. Tim? Yeah, I think one important thing is the development of internet, and the world the whole world is connected, really connected uh, through the internet. So I think uh, it's given us a very good opportunity to express our voices and try to let other people know about our situations. And together, if we could gather, gather, some, gather some support from the internet and make some changes through the internet, I think it's going to uh, uh, solve a lot of problems. Through advocacy yes, right. on various platforms. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Last but not least, Grace. I agree with Truman and Tim that first that we, we want to gather more facts or using numbers or true stories or even the history to explain like the whole thing, what, what, what it was, why is it, and like why people believe like this way, not the other way. Mm. I learned a lot, I have to say, through talking to the three of you from very different perspectives. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.